The Southern Caribbean for a long time has been a sought after cruise destination. But for the longest time, it's been a destination that you've had to fly to Puerto Rico or take a longer 10 to 12 day cruise in order to access. But in recent years, it seems as if the cruise lines have figured out the demand and figured out more creative ways to make this a destination that's achieved by simply going to Florida. Today, I wanna go over some of the ways that I've seen that the cruise lines have been able to be creative in this way, some of the destinations that are considered Southern Caribbean, and why the Southern Caribbean has become such a highly sought after destination. years, leaving from Florida meant that you were either going to do a Western Caribbean or an Eastern Caribbean cruise. If you were sailing out on an Eastern Caribbean cruise, you were going to see ports like St. Martin, St. Thomas, San Juan, Puerto Rico, and areas over on that side. If you were doing a Western Caribbean cruise, it meant that you were going to see Cozumel, Grand Cayman, Jamaica, and maybe that was it for the longest time. And in recent years, they've added so many new ports to the Eastern and Western Caribbean itineraries. You can go to places like the Dominican Republic. You can go to Honduras. You can go to Belize. They've added so many different cruise itineraries. And the cruise lines have really figured out a way to amp up all of their islands. So these private islands in the Bahamas have also become very, very popular destinations. For longtime cruisers, the Eastern and Western itineraries have just become Pale. They've become boring. They've become mundane. Something you could, you've could you done probably over and over and over again. And if cruisers wanted to access the Southern Caribbean, that meant that they were flying to Puerto Rico or they were going to take a longer 10 to 12 day cruise out of Florida or even out of New York where it would be a 12 to 14 day cruise. And then they would be able to access the Southern Caribbean ports such as Aruba or Curacao or Bonaire or Barbados. There's just a lot of people that don't have to have that much time to be able to take off to access those cruise ports. And a lot of people don't want to fly to Puerto Rico because it adds maybe one, maybe two days to your to your vacation. So, again, you're adding time to that vacation and some people just don't have that time to take off. Well, with the seven day Eastern and Western itineraries, cruise lines were missing out on a lot of opportunity to get some people on board. And a few years ago, especially before the pandemic, I had started to notice that there was a lot more six and eight day itineraries. And in those itineraries, there was an extra sea day. There was a little bit more time on the ship. So you had the opportunity to take a Sunday to Saturday cruise, or you had the opportunity to take a Saturday to Sunday cruise. But none of them were accessing the Southern Caribbean. They were doing some, maybe an extra port, like I said, or maybe they were doing an extra sea day taking advantage of some of the larger ships that were out there. You know, you had Carnival especially. Royal Caribbean was doing it on their newest ships at the time. And it just gave people an opportunity to get a little bit more of experience of the ship. But I think the cruise lines at some point figured out that the Southern Caribbean was a highly sought after destination. I don't know if they saw it through how they were booking up some of their San Juan cruises. I don't know if they saw it when they came back from the, from the pandemic and they realized that they weren't going to be able to sail out of San Juan as much. So that kind of changed how they were going to do that, but they didn't want to give up access to the Southern Caribbean. So what I've noticed in the recent years, or the recently, especially over the last year, year and a half, is these eight-day cruises that are buzzing all the way down to Aruba and Curacao. And I think this is an awesome opportunity. I think there's a lot of people that can swing a Saturday to Sunday cruise. They don't mind jumping on a plane on Friday after work get their vacation started and get down there and, and get ready for the cruise. And then they get one extra day on the ship and it gives them access to some cruise ports that they just didn't have before on those seven day cruises. And, and so we're seeing this increased popularity show up across multiple cruise lines. Carnival has it, Royal Caribbean has it, Celebrity has it. And it's just kind of opening up some awesome opportunities. And why are people choosing the Southern Caribbean? Well, in the winter, people are choosing the Southern Caribbean because it's warmer. You're getting closer to the equator. You're going down off the coast of South America. You're down there, way down south. You get a little bit warmer winter weather. 
Who wants to be going on a cruise in January? I've done this before where we went on a cruise at the end of February and we were wearing hoodies. You know, we, and we had beach days that were a little bit cooler and we just wished we had a little bit warmer weather. And maybe if we had done the Eastern Caribbean instead of going to Belize, we would have had that. You know, maybe we just timed it out bad with the cold front that happened to come through. But, you know, if you're going to head all the way down to Aruba and Curacao, you're going to make, you're going to get better weather. You're almost guaranteed it. So when I think about these six and eight day itinerary swaps that cruise lines are doing now, I was kind of thinking to myself, like, why are they able to make this happen so much better now than they were before? And I think there's several reasons. And one, I think I was thinking about Royal Caribbean in particular. When Oasis and Allure of the Seas came out, the only cruise port that could handle them was Port Everglades. They had their terminal they had built specifically there for them. And so you had Allure doing, let's say, a Saturday to Saturday cruise. And you had Oasis was doing a Sunday to Sunday cruise. So that was it. They could only do those alternating cruises because one needed the port on Saturday and one needed the home port on Sunday. Now, if you think about Allure of the Seas and you think about the Oasis class ships, you've got two Oasis class ships in Port Everglades. You've got two of them in Miami. You've got one in Port Canaveral and you've got all the, and then in the summer, you've got one in New York. So you, and now you've got one in, in Houston. So you've got these ships just spread out which opens up capacity at the home ports. And that gives you ability to free up a Saturday. That gives you the ability to free up a different day where you can bring these ships and alternate their schedules and still have the space freed up for your seven day cruises. And with being able to alternate them again, now you're able to get these eight day cruises in. And when you can get these eight day cruises in, you have enough time to get you down to Aruba. Now, the challenge is, is it's still pretty far south, so these cruise ships are having to trek down there, and if they're making a stop before, or even if they have this full day after they make a couple stops you know, up north, they're getting down to Aruba pretty late. But I think that opens up a unique opportunity as well. If you're taking an Aruba cruise like I have coming up, or the Odyssey of the Seas cruise that I'm going on in a couple weeks, now I get an 11.30 a.m. port time to 11 p.m. I get sunsets. I get evening times. I get bar times in the, at night. This opens up a whole world of exploring the island that just, you know, wouldn't be, I would say, wouldn't be done if the cruise lines were running a more traditional route. They would be in there from eight to five. Then you'd go float around the ocean for a couple hours or overnight until you had to go to Curacao the next day. And it's like 40 miles. So you don't need a whole night to get there. So it's really cool that they're going to put Aruba. You're going to get there late. They're going to have a late night stop in Aruba. And then you're, you know, you easily make it on your way over to the next port at Curacao the next morning. So I, I, it's really interesting to see how this is working out. And I'm really excited. And then there's a high demand for these Southern Caribbean cruises. So it's, it, it's exciting to see the cruise lines meeting that demand. So what are some of the islands that are in the Southern Caribbean? Well, I've already mentioned Aruba and Curacao, but you also have Bonaire. And traditionally, that's been the ABC route. So in the old days, if you were going to leave from uh, San Juan, Puerto Rico, you would do a route that included the ABCs, Aruba, Bonaire, and Curacao. So you would go down there and that would be your route. And if you did the other side of it, you would be visiting ports such as Barbados, Antigua, St. Lucia, St. Kitts. So these are the other side of the, of the Southern Caribbean. And it's been, that's been a more popular side in the past and I think with, again, with the recent changes and the way that the ports opened back up and the way that cruise lines were able to get these cruises back in, we've seen that shift over to the other side and growing popularity in Aruba and Curacao. So when you think about the Southern Caribbean, one of the things that I love about the Southern Caribbean, when you think about all these islands that I just named, is the vast difference in landscape there. When you think about Aruba and Curacao, it's almost ocean desert. It's cactus, it's arid, it's beautiful, It's but it's one side of it. Barbados is kind of a mixture. You know, when I was there, I remember it being a little bit of ocean desert, but I also remember some lush. St. Lucia is beautiful, lush, almost rainforest type landscaping with mountain peaks and, and it's just amazing. When you're heading down to the Southern Caribbean, you don't just get those same island vibes that you get from the rest of the Caribbean, you actually get a whole different landscape and a whole different type of 
experience. And people do ATV tours down there and people are doing cliff diving and people are doing, there's just so many different types of excursions that people are able to see down there. But you're also getting, you know, when you get to Aruba and Curacao, you're getting Dutch influence. So you're visiting an island that, that has a whole different nationality, a whole different feel than some of the other islands in the Caribbean. Just being able to experience these other cultures really sets, sets up some success for the Southern Caribbean. A lot of people these days, when they say they're going to travel, they say they want to experience the culture. They want to experience what, you know, something different. Well, when you're going to an island in the Caribbean that's got some heavy Dutch influence and heavy Spanish influence, that's a little bit different. And it's Instagrammable. When you look at Curacao and you see the colored buildings lining the canal and the floating bridge, people want to take pictures of that and they want to be able to share that on their Instagram. And I know that that seems maybe a little weird for an opportunity or a reason for people to take a vacation or plan a vacation to a certain spot, but people love that stuff. And, and, and when you look at, you look up Curacao, you see these people, you see people Instagramming those buildings. And it, it and so it's got some appeal in that sense. So overall, I think the Southern Caribbean appeals to a lot of different people. It appeals to long-term cruisers that don't want to just continue to go to St. Martin, St. Thomas, and Cozumel. It appeals to new cruisers that are looking for new culture to experience, that are looking for awesome Instagram spots, that are looking for different types of landscapes to experience other than just lush uh, or just the beach. And as I said earlier, when you factor in the six to eight day swaps that they're doing on some of these cruise lines, that eight day vacation just happens to fit in perfectly for so many people that are looking for a, like to maximize their vacation time without having to go over their week allotment. And so it fits. So those are just some of the reasons that I think that people are switching to the Southern Caribbean cruises. Why don't you guys tell me down below in the comments, do you agree why the Southern Caribbean is opening up with these eight day sailings? Do you think that that's why people are jumping on board and selecting Southern Caribbean itineraries more than they used to? Do you think that people are picking the, the seven and seven still, or do you think that they're enjoying the eight day? Would you enjoy an eight day itinerary where you get to go all the way down to Aruba or Curacao or both and experience that with maybe a stop in the Bahamas or maybe a stop at Royal Caribbean's private island on the way? Or would you prefer traditional seven day cruise where you're hitting up Grand Cayman, Jamaica, and Cozumel and really just enjoying some of the most popular cruise ports in the world? Let me know down below. I'd love to read your comments on this. And also guys, if you haven't had the chance yet, hit that subscribe button. I'm gonna do an entire series on the Southern Caribbean ports. I'm gonna, I'm gonna break them down. I'm actually going to two of them in the next couple weeks. So I'm gonna be able to bring you guys firsthand knowledge of what it's like to go to Aruba and what it's like to go to Curacao. And I'm going in without a plan. I'm gonna go down there and I'm gonna figure out what are the best things to do with just showing up and just exploring. Just like the channel says, right? We're going to go down there and we're just going to be out exploring. And I'm excited to bring that to you guys. But you got to hit that subscribe button so you know when those videos are coming out. And I'm also going to do port profiles on the rest of the Southern Caribbean. Like I said, this is a growing area. And a lot of people are enjoying that region. I'm really looking forward to bringing you guys more content about that and about other cruises. I've got a lot lined up and I'm excited to bring you some comparisons and some would you rathers and all kinds of different fun stuff that I've got planned for the channel. So yeah, so hit that subscribe button, leave a comment down below. Let me know, are you interested in the Southern Caribbean or would you, or are you someone who wants to just stick to the traditional seven day Eastern or Western Caribbean cruises? And I look forward to reading those and we'll see you guys out there just out exploring.